Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, we're going to be working with the Kung Fu Butterfly Knives. Now, this is going to go over the basics. So we're going to be focusing on some basic attacks, but very specifically from a situation where you're caught up and connecting with your opponent. So this could be when you finally moved close enough that you're connecting weapon to weapon, if somebody else is using butterfly knives, or if they're using daggers or a short stick, we could also use this from a bit of a distance to clear a path and then charge in. So we're gonna explore this through a couple of different strikes and we can see different ways of using the butterfly knives. So let's grab a set and get to work. Now for this video, we're going to be focusing on a bunch of different techniques from the same starting position. So the context here you want to think of is being already in contact with your opponent. So your opponent could have butterfly knives, they could have a knife, they could have double daggers, they could have a single stick or double sticks. It could be any kind of a short weapon, but we're in close towards our opponent and we're already making contact. So this puts you in a position where you don't want to make any to open movements or uh, allow yourself open for counterattack. So what, we're going to, what we want to do is control our opponent's weapon or weapons so that we can allow our other blade to be withdrawn and then we can counterattack in many different ways. Okay, so the first movement we're going to do is a cover. Now, this is a forward press that we're going to use as we do this, I'm pushing down, so I push or punch forward. I'm not trying to swing downward here, and I'm not trying to use my wrist, and I'm not trying to slap down as I do this. I'm punching forward with this one, okay? So it's a forward press the entire time, downward diagonal. Now, if I'm pushing against their blade, that's fine, that's great. Usually people meet uh, push with resistance. So they're going to tense up and they're going to push against it. Somebody who's more skilled may start yielding a little bit to try to roll and go over the top. So that means that our following attack should be fast. Uh, there's also ways that you can move in as you do this to really put the pressure on. But usually people are going to push back and it's going to limit their amount of movement, allowing you enough time to throw your strike. Now the other thing is if we end up going further and we hit the arm, we hit the wrist or the forearm. It may not do the most damage, but it's a blade. So if we make contact, it's going to do something and anything is a plus in this position, as long as we have control. Now, if they completely are open at all, you can employ more of a forward chop and we can really put the pressure on and use this as a forward attack. Again, I prefer that you think of this in the context that you're already connected to your opponent because yes, we could use this from a distance. This could be uh, like a preliminary movement to test the water, kind of like how fighters use a jab to gauge distance and to see how the opponent reacts. So we could use this to set it up and just make them move, whether they're gonna try to chase it, whether they're gonna try to move back, whether they're gonna try to lift. From here, you can read your opponent and attack. But I, again, I prefer you think of this in the context of we're already in contact with them, and now we wanna set it up so we can counter with whatever we have. <laughs> The first technique that we're going to work on here is a forward thrust. Okay, so we're going to be stabbing with the knife. Now, of course, we have multiple targets that we can stab, and I want you to always remember that anywhere on them that's available is a target. So if you push here and you don't have the distance to attack to the body and they start moving back, you can still try to use this to stab one of the arms. The only thing is, an arm is much smaller than the entire body, so you have a good chance of missing. So you have to be very accurate if you're gonna employ that. But again, never limit yourself to thinking that you can only stab here or here or here or here. You have multiple places, okay? So what we're going to do is notice that when I press forward, I pull this back, but the tip of the blade is pointing forward, okay? So now my, my, the tip of the blade is ready and it's towards the opponent. If they react and they flip over, now I have something at least I can raise up and kind of use to protect myself. But it also makes it very easy for me to move forward into my stab or my thrust, okay? So again, I want to press 
and then I can go over the top and thrust. Or from the press, I can go underneath and thrust. If you're going underneath, you can have more of a hooking motion here, but the one thing you want to avoid is making contact to your own weapon. So once I press here, I can still thrust low, I can swing, or I can go over the top. And this is a good way to practice, okay? So um, we have the practical sense of keeping the blade and the pressure forward. I can practice low, press, high, press, low, press, high. Now I can also work on gaining more power in training and that's by turning the shoulders and turning the waist more. And the way that we can practice that is from this position, I pull this hand, my pressing hand back so that I can extend further with both my shoulder and my hip of the attacking arm. This is more for practice than practical, but it will help develop power. So practice all three. We have press, low, press, high, press, pull. The next technique that we're going to focus on is the chop. Now, when you do a chop, I want you to picture this as kind of like an ax. And just like how somebody would use an ax to chop down a tree, that's that same kind of energy that we would use in this. Now, the, the ax itself, you would think of the ax head being right here, or like a hatchet in your hand. So when you chop, you want to swing this part of the knife into your target. Now, when you have a blade like this, that's a little bit wider towards the top, it gets a little bit more weight, which gives you more momentum and a stronger chop. So this is a really nice knife for this technique. Okay, now the chop itself will have power no matter what, if you're just gonna swing it in, you didn't even have training. But what gives us that extra edge <laughs> is that we have a little extra snap at the end. So you should have this kind of a snap plus the big swing is going to give you maximum power. Okay, so we have the hinge from the elbow and then we have the extra wrist snap and if you turn the waist, put the body into this, you're going to get maximum power efficiency on this one. All right. Now, the way that we get this extra little snap at the end is by an extra grip with our ring finger and our pinky finger. So we want to squeeze that a little bit more at the last second. It's not just my wrist doing the motion here. It's squeezing with the fingers. Okay. So we can use the chop in two ways. We can go vertical with the chop or we can go diagonal with the chop. Technically, you could also go horizontal with the chop, but this motion is much more efficient if you do a slice, which we'll get into in another technique, okay? So again, we're gonna go over the top because chopping underneath our guard, if the hand gets raised up here, our guard can get in our own way. So it's much better to go over the top of your weapons. So when we press down, if we can control their arm, control their weapons, and have an opening over the top, this is where we're gonna seal the deal right here, okay? So again, I press and then I can chop straight forward. Step in if you can, get some extra power on that one. Or step all the way forward here. It depends on your distance, it depends on how you can move your feet. Okay, so again, vertical chop, or you can work from this position, press again, so we have vertical chop, press, diagonal chop. So I'm chopping towards the throat, or if they have limbs out, I can chop towards those as well, all right? So press, vertical, press, diagonal, press, vertical, press, diagonal. The next technique we're gonna work on is an upward scooping technique. Now, this is an easy one to see. It's an easy one to do until you spar with it. <laughs> and this is where it becomes very unusual. People don't use this type of scooping movement as often because it's an awkward position when you have to be, uh, when you have to adapt to your opponent's timing and distance, you don't know what they're gonna throw because this one can tend to open you up a little bit. Now, this is a great technique to attack the opponent's limbs and wrists because it can easily sneak underneath and get towards the wrists and be unseen, especially if I'm pressing here and they start withdrawing, this one comes underneath, or I can use the same hand to block and then to come up and attack. When you do this, try not to adjust your grip and end up letting go, just to have a nice appearance in an end position. 
If you're just trying to get a good look for your form, you sacrifice the form itself. So make sure, just bring this hand up in front of the chest where you can still keep a good grip on the blade. And notice I'm not trying to scoop upward here. That puts a lot of extra pressure on my wrist. I'm just going to leave it so the tip of the blade is forward. So that even if I miss and they move back, now there's an obstacle in their way that they're gonna have to move around to get to me, okay? So again, when I press, this is where we're gonna have to make a slight uh, adapting movement, okay? So once we press here, if my arm is there, I don't wanna chop up into my own blade. Okay, so here I'm going to have to move. And it's best that from this position, we raise both. If you can get both to come up, the waist turns better, the body raises this one up, you get a much better strike. So from our starting position, press, lift both up. Now there's two ways that we can hold the blades up. One is that our top blade is flat. So notice how in this position is pointing towards you, it's flat towards my opponent. The other way is to have both tips of the knives point towards my opponent. Now the key here is try not to have too much difference in angle in any of these. You wanna to try to match it as parallel as possible, okay? It's a lot harder than it sounds. So push, raise, push, raise, push, scoop and lift, press, scoop and lift, okay? So we have that upward attacking here. We can go underneath the chin, we can go to the arms or armpit if it's exposed. This is an excellent target as well. Now let's do the gouge. The gouge is a really mean and very useful technique. The gouge we're going to lead with the tip of the knife to uh, hook and stab forward. So we're really gouging with this one. The key, the nice thing about this technique is it can go around corners. So the, the downside is it tends to be a little bit open. So if I'm trying to set up and do something like this, you can see my preliminary movement. However, for you to block it, you can't block it at a distance that you normally would. Notice that it's way past the target here. You would have to block much further out. So even though it's easy to see, you still have to be fast to be able to block this one and not get hit, okay? so. From here, and also you can shorten the technique, which makes it much harder to see. And it also is still effective if you train it properly and get some power from the hips. So what we're gonna do is press and pull back. Notice my hand drops all the way back here. Now for training sake, I want you to focus on waist rotation. From the press, turn your whole body, okay? And pull this hand back. I was talking about that one before. So again, press and pull both shoulders back. This will give you much better waist rotation and power uh, usage. Once you get comfortable with that, slowly work on either going below or over your guard. There's dangers here because if you're not paying attention, you could stab yourself <laughs> with your guard. You could also stab yourself with, your, uh, with the main striking hand if you're not paying attention. So from when you start working on this, just work on going slow, work on making it a natural movement to strike underneath or to strike over the top, okay, before you start adding speed and power to that. So again, work on those three configurations. So press, pull the hand back, press, under, press, over, press, hand back, press, under, press, over, press, hand back. The last strike that I wanna focus on is the slice. Now the slice is, uh, it's a composition of two types of things that you want. You want pressure and draw, and that's going to make a successful and efficient slice. What I mean by this is if I just, had, if I just took out a knife and I let the weight of the knife just sit on my arm and I pull back, it's going to make a little cut. That's fine, it makes a cut, that's, it's doing its job. If I take the blade and I just let the weight of the blade drop, I have pressure on here, I could break the skin as well. If you combine the two, you have pressure and you have draw, you're going to have more weight on the draw, which is going to make it cut deeper and open more. So it's much more efficient if you can have both of those. If you don't, it's kind of one of those movements that you could easily leave yourself open for counterattack.
Okay. Now for this drill, I want you to focus on slicing high. We're going to be going about neck level, but you can always go down towards the body as well. The only thing is if somebody's wearing clothing, clothing is flexible. It can be drawn with the blade and you may cut through the clothing, but that's as far as you go. So it really depends on your skill and the, <laughs> how sharp your blades are at this point. Other targets are exposed limbs. All right. So again, we're going to press and notice I dropped my hand back just like when we did the gouge. But from here, I want to hit almost think of like I'm just going to chop to the to the neck. And then from there, I want to follow through. And the key thing is once I strike through, if I don't, if I just follow all the way through, I'm open for attack. But if I draw with that pressure forward, I get that power and I want to leave the tip of my blade forward. So now I have something to block me from my opponent. If they, if I end up missing or get blocked, there's an obstacle that they have to move through. Okay. So no matter what pressure and draw, keep the tip of the blade in front of your center line when you're done with the strike. Okay. So you can keep this in front of your nose or you can keep it in front of the, the center line here. It doesn't matter how you want to make that rule, but don't let the tip of the blade swing all the way down unless you've got some kind of follow-up after that, all right? Because you leave yourself crossed up and exposed, all right? So let's practice press, slice, press, slice. Now, again, I can either pull my hand all the way back or from the press, I can just keep it underneath the elbow here as I go for that slice. Again, press, over, press, back, press, over, press, back. Okay, so there you have it. Now, of course, this is very specific to making contact with your opponent in a block or clearing or bridging type manner. You don't always need to start from a distance and then just try to press forward with this. It can be used to try to instigate movement. Maybe you want to do this to make them, you know, move and then you can follow up and strike after that. It, but if you're from a distance, you can use another technique to clear and strike. It's really up to you. But this is more specific towards when you caught up and you're in a bind with your opponent maybe you have both of the blades caught up you're going to press down and then move in after that okay and it gives you several options and we get to see different ways of using butterfly knives so if you have any questions drop a comment down below otherwise make sure to hit that like button and as always be sure to subscribe till next time this is sifu cuddle thanks for watching bye